Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden and to celebrate the start of summer the weather has turned cool. It's around 11, 12 degrees but it's great to have some rain and in this video I'm just going to go over some of the things that I'm doing in the garden to help keep it maintained and to prepare for later on in the year. Before we get into this video, I just wanted to quickly mention about my Patreon and my Patreon is a place where I put up two extra videos a week exclusive to Patrons, showing you more of the behind the scenes of what's happening in this garden and how I do particular things. So it only costs around $3 a month around £2.50 to access eight exclusive videos and if you want to find out a little bit more head on over to patreon.com forward slash Hugh Richards. One of the most important jobs when it comes to early summer maintenance is looking after your tomato plants and the first thing that you need to do is just make sure that you're just keeping down uh, on any weeds that are growing around the place uh, like this one and then you've got to make sure uh, especially in a cooler climate like this to try and take off as many suckers as possible just so it can focus a bit more energy um, in the growth and then you cap it off later on in the year but a lot of tomato plants like to send out these kind of suckers right at the base so i'm just going to go along uh, these plants and uh, cut these off or if they're smaller ones you can kind of just pull them off uh, and you can see that there's a lot more breathing space. And the reason why you want to do this is exactly for the breathing space. If there's not a good enough airflow around your tomato plants, they can encourage things like tomato blight. And another thing that you want to do is any of the older leaves to actually uh, cut them off. And in fact, I'm gonna let this tomato plant develop a little bit more, but once you get that first truss, um, for example, uh, here where you can see the flowers, that's a truss of fruit uh, and you want to uh, technically cut off all of the leaves below that first truss just to make it nice and healthy. I've got another sucker coming off there which is quite a big one um, and then I'm going to take off this here and you can already see uh, just how much uh, this is beginning to breathe and suckers will uh, produce fruit but here I'm focusing just because it's quite early on in the year I can afford to take these off to help them grow up the string and you can see already just how much more breathing space this has and it just helps keep it nice and healthy. We've just been through a period of hardly any rain for around about two months and May was a record breaking month with the longest sunshine hours and that has been very difficult for us because we're not on mains water just on spring so with the rain that was forecasted we made sure that we put out as many buckets as possible to capture water that we're then going to fill up the IBC tanks and the other tanks to then use in the garden because even though it looks like it's going to be okay for the next few weeks it's better to be safe them sorry and to have all of this extra stored water that's come right off the barn is a really really secure feeling. Because we've had so much dry weather it's been hard to keep up on all of the watering and as a result some of the things have run to seed. For example this perpetual spinach here has but all I'm going to do is cut this seed um, kind of sprouting head off like this. Um, I can use the leaves if I want to and hopefully it'll just encourage it to keep on sending more of the leaves we want rather than flowering stems. As the season progresses, the plants begin to mature more, but what happens is the lower leaves often turn yellow and die off. So just this is out of aesthetic reasons, but I like to go around and just pick off some of the lower leaves or any leaves um, that are damaged or beginning to color. Uh, so aren't too appetizing. This is just so it looks uh, a lot nicer um, and it helps tidy things up. It gives the plants a little bit more breathing space and as well I think it will help reduce chances of disease because you haven't got that weaker foliage at the bottom uh, which has less protection against the elements. So it's just a personal thing um, but I like to spend just a couple of minutes around different parts of the garden, picking off any leaves that are yellowing at the base. 
One of my favourite things about early summer is that there's still plenty of opportunity to grow lots of things from seed and I absolutely adore homegrown beetroot so I'm going to be putting just a random row in here and uh, you can see we've got uh, dwarf beans of which I have more um, that will be transplanted but if you're unsure on what you can uh, or can't sow at this time of year then you should definitely check out this video uh, by Liz Zorab and uh, she goes over all of the main seeds uh, and vegetable types that you can start uh, sowing in June so you can still get harvests later on in summer through to autumn and also through winter. For June one of the main things you've got to do is to make sure that you continuously harvest your salads uh, especially your lettuce unless you want them um, to, to create a nice kind of heart which is what I'll probably let these do because I've got lettuce elsewhere. What I'm now doing in this area is I've got some uh, pak choi here. Uh, firstly this is a bit of vol damage, I uh, went and snipped them uh, and there's also a bit of flea beetle damage but because it's going to be a lot cooler over the next few days I think it's the ideal opportunity uh, to transplant these. So try and do uh, any kind of job uh, when the weather is cooler that you otherwise wouldn't have done during hot, dry, warm weather. For example, uh, transplanting anything uh, that's needed that's susceptible uh, to flea beetle. And this is my first time uh, growing uh, pak choi. So I'm kind of keen to, to see how well this does. And uh, please keep your fingers crossed for this. June is the month where you have so much growing in your garden and often if you have a medium garden or lots of different things growing you can forget at what stages things are. So what I like to do is just have a bit of a look around once a week just to see how things are progressing and these potatoes are just beginning uh, to come into flower now which is a sign that we can start harvesting them if we want. So I'll probably let these grow and develop for another two or three weeks before harvesting but I know that uh, end of June uh, through to early July I need to have a nice day of harvesting all of the potatoes and get everything ready uh, to make that harvest successful. For example storage space and I can look forward to planning some meals around it. So just take note of what kind of gluts are coming up uh, so you can best prepare for those so you can really enjoy them. One of the best things about June, July and then August is because the beds are really filling up, the need to weed reduces. So for example, these peas, I'm just going to give them one final uh, quick weed around them, but then I'm just going to let them do their thing because as plants develop, they then begin to smother out the space and they will always outcompete any smaller weed trying to grow through. So just look forward to not having uh, to weed as much. It's a, it's a real joy and uh, it's nice to turn uh, our focus from weeding more towards harvests. Here's the lettuce and this is just uh, ready for harvesting. So I'm going to start going around using the Charles Dowding method of harvesting lettuce. I've been using it for like three or four years now and it just works an absolute treat and just in a matter of uh, seconds uh, I've already got that much food which is brilliant. Now a very quick tip about lettuce is if you want to give it a water the best place that I find to water is directly over the top over the kind of the crown. The reason why is that the water will then seep down and it will fall in and around the stem. So rather than trying to lift it up and then pour it around the stem, which can be a pain and damage the leaves, I just prefer to water lettuce over it. Now, the final thing that I'd want to leave you with, the final thought is, after making note of what things are going to be ready uh, to harvest, it's also important to make note of what empty space is going to happen or, or going to come out of those harvests. For example, the broad beans are going to be uh, empty 
in probably around a month. And that's empty space that can be planted up. So just start thinking about things and crops that you can start off in modules to then transplant in around a month in that empty space to really try and get the most from it. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully this has given you just a little bit of an idea about what I start to do and to prepare as we move into summer.